Hey, welcome back guys. Jason with Fish Testing Forever. Uh, today we're making some, uh, let me turn the camera down a little bit. Making some float hooks, float hooks for uh, Pompano. So I can't see them all. Welcome back guys, Jason with Fish Testing Forever. We're making some float hooks today. Uh, I'm, my personal favorite is a one-aught kale hook, like you would use for trout, speckled trout, uh, for pompano. Uh, I've been fishing my whole life and I've tried every kind of hook there is for pompano, but my, my favorite is kale hooks. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold these with the pliers. Well, I like to hold the tip side out that way I don't damage the tip or the point while I'm pushing on it and on the, the flattest widest part of the pliers I'm just gonna heat for three seconds and then I'm gonna get the float and just watch don't touch the hook because you want to burn yourself and just slide it on it oozes right on and I go right past the, the, the eyelet and just let it sit now I got a couple of them that I've already done here and it barely, it, it will not move. It will not move. But what I do is get close enough there. You can see a little hole right here. What I do is I use Gorilla Glue or Super Glue and just dab a little bit inside there. And uh, they make sure it doesn't move. I like to float on the hook. It's just uh Something I've been doing for about 15 years. Keep the bait up. I noticed way back when, I don't know, I remember I used to ride my, as a kid I used to ride my bike to the beach and uh, go get, try to catch Pompano. And back when uh, Eglin property used to be open, I used to ride across the Destin Bridge and go over there and go Pompano fishing. And uh, I would consistently catch stingrays and uh that tells me one thing as i'm older now is uh the bait's too close to the bottom so i put a little super glue inside the hook and that's going to keep that that float that hook floated up in the surface water column i got several made because uh the last time i went pompano fishing i uh, i lost several rigs it was rough and uh <clears throat> i find that when it's rough your weight gets buried down in the sand um uh, a little, a little quicker than it does when it's not rough. And uh, I use five ounce uh, Sputnik weights. I've got some some of them that I bought 30 years ago and I've got some that I bought recently from thesinkerguy.com. And I can't tell you how many times I've referenced thesinkerguy.com to go buy some more because every time I go fishing, people are like, man, what are you doing? What are you using? What kind of weight are you using in, in this rough stuff? And I just tell them over and over and over again, thesinkerguy.com and I can't tell you how much business I, uh, I've gotten that guy I'm sorry I don't remember your name right now but uh it's uh you've been getting a lot of business from me every time I go fishing so I just I already did this one it moves a little bit more oh it don't actually comes all the way out I might redo that one but this one doesn't move at all so I'm just gonna dab a little bit of super glue inside the hook and the hole Shaking around a little bit. I do have a a line over here that I use to make crappie jigs. And I'll just hang it on that. That way the super glue while it's drying can get all the way up inside the hole. And uh, I'm gonna make another video on how I make the pumpkin over here. All right guys, I'll be making some uh, drop rigs for pompano. And uh, I got the Sabiki rig here just to show you what I do. So on a Sabiki rig, the branch line test is seven pound and the main test is 13 pound. So what I do is I pre-measure some spots on my bark bench. Uh, basically this is 42 inches right here on the edge. 
the second dot is uh, 10 inches. And then the second, shit, I did it wrong. All right, guys, welcome back. Jason Dudley with Fish Testing Forever. Uh, making some Pompano drop rigs. Uh, I got my hooks pre made. I got some over here that are drying. Uh, I put some super glue in the tips of them after I push the float through. Make sure they're good and stable. Again, I prefer the kale hook. Uh, owner of Mutu Circle Light Circle Hooks were used to be my favorite for years. But for pompano fishing, uh, I like the uh, the kale hooks, and I like affixing the float to the hook. It just seems like it works better for me. That's my personal preference. I got a Sabiki rig here. It's uh, just for reference. If you can get close enough there, you can see that the branch test is seven, and the main test is thirteen. So what I do in the pompano rigs is I use thirty for the main rig, uh, Berkeley Vanish. 30 pound and then 20 for the branch lines and every one of them I make the same uh, and it only works for me but if the next guy next to me is catching them left and right then you guarantee I'll be watching what he's doing and, and changing it up that most of the time I don't have any problem catching popping on my rigs so what I do is I pre-measure everything uh, at the end here is uh, where the, the weight would go and this connection I like these connections here for the Sputnik weights and then this first the, they got another connection here we we'll talked about that we'll talk about that in a second this this is where the first hook goes and the second hook goes here at 28 inches and the top swivel goes here at 42 inches and then when I tie my branch lines, I make them 8 inches. That way they can float around and uh, move around and, and then be far enough apart from the 10 and 28 inches so they don't get tangled up. Give you a quick view of my uh, mini bass pro shops up in here. Tons of tackle, tons of rods. Hi right, guys, welcome back. Jason Dudley from Fish Testing Forever. Right now we're getting ready to do the main line for the double dropper loop for Pompano. I've got some 30 pound Berkeley Vanish. It's uh, over here behind a bunch of stuff that I don't feel like moving and it's sliding off just fine. So what I'm gonna do is just pull it off and use it as needed. So if you've seen in the other video, I like my, make all my leaders, all my leaders the same, 42 inches, but since I'm measuring 42 inches I don't I'm, I'm gonna be tying some figure eight knots in that so I don't want to lose on the length so I just pull extra line is what it is can't tell you how much line I've cut uh, so I go to the first zero and I give it a little extra because I'm gonna be tying another knot right for the uh, for the weight or the top swivel so I give it a, a little bit a couple inches and I just mark at uh, 10 inches and I get ready to, to make that figure eight knot make a little twist and come back around and make the first figure eight knot before I cinch it down I go over here and mark and make sure I have enough line on both sides to uh, be sure I tie it in the right spot and I just slowly cinch it down Cinch it down, then I double check how much line I have to tie the knot. So this time is a little bit, not a whole lot on this side that I'll have to tie the knot. So I'm gonna line up the first figure eight knot with that 10 inches and then just make another figure eight knot just on the up, up side of that knot. That way I'll know I have plenty of line to tie on the weight. Yeah, I don't, I'm not real perfect on the second knot because the second knot, all it's doing is just holding the branch line in between that those two. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to double check again. 10 inches. Pretty much do the center line like you're building a house. 
and I got plenty of line to tie the other knot. So now I'm gonna go here, measure this, put this 10 inches where it's supposed to go, go up to the middle of the 28. Then I'm gonna twist and make a figure eight knot here. Start pulling it down. And then now I got the figure eight knot here. I'm gonna line up the 10 on the 28. See, I pulled up a little too much, so I just pull up some slack and pull down on some slack. Measure it up again, 10 and 28. And it doesn't got to be perfect. Uh, but see, this time it, it landed a little bit to the left of the 28. So this next knot that I tie is going to be a little bit to the downward side of the main line. Sometimes the figure eight knots get all tangled up. You just got to straighten them out and tie them. So now I got the other figure eight knot on the bottom side of that knot. I'm just going to pull them tight. They're separated about a little over an inch, but it's fine. The branch line is going to be able to slide up and down. So I'm just going to measure again. 10, 28 right in the center. And then I got another 10 inches in front of that top swivel. So now... I'm going to go and tie on this uh, sinker holder. And I just like to use an improved clinch knot. The five, I don't even really count. I just make, do it till it looks pretty. It looks pretty. Do the under and under. Pull it tight. And I like to leave about a half inch to three, quarter, three quarters of an inch tag line. Because when you pull on it, these uh, these rigs normally last me a whole season at least, if not two seasons. And uh, the only reason I'll change it out is because the hooks get kind of rusted from being used so much. <clears throat> and go down here and measure it again. Okay, perfect. Then I had this much slack left over. So I'm going to cut that and tie on the swivel. Another improved clinch. Pull it down nice and tight. Now, now I have the branch line ready. For the weight, the main line, the braided line, and then the two dropper rigs. So I'm going to make another video on how to, ma how to make the dropper rigs. And then another video, just because I don't have so many videos on YouTube yet, on how to connect the dropper rigs, the, the branch line to the dropper rig. Alright, welcome back guys. Jason with Fish Destin Forever. I just got some Berkeley Vanish. You get it from Walmart. It's a 200 yard spool, 20 pound test, 250 yard spool. I, I don't really care about using it too much. I just pull off two feet or so because my hands are big and it takes me a while to, a lot to get started tying a knot. So I just fold the line over like this and then I just bring it back and I tie a loop knot. So I'm, I'm tying making the hole bigger for my bigger fingers and then sticking through two times. And then I just cinch it down as tight as possible. It doesn't have to be super tight, but I do where the loop about the size of a quarter quarter will fit in the loop. Pull it down nice and tight. And I cut off the tag in. I like to leave about a half inch. If, if they can see the half inch, then I need to be using smaller line test, right? And then I'll go over here to my mark. Let me see. 
Got a mark over here. So this is zero. This is eight inches. This is ten inches. So I'm gonna mark from here to here and tie the hook on. I got some hooks over here drying on this behind a camera. Float hook and I got uh Super glue inside inside the cavity just helps secure the float in place. Just tie it on. I just try to tie the improve improve clinch on as tight as possible with as with as little tag line as possible. That way I'm not using up on my branch line. See. So it's about six to eight inches, probably eight inches on this one. So it can float around with a bait on it up above the, the ground or the sand. And again, I'm trying to tag line half inch or so. And I'll make two of these and I'm gonna make another video on how to attach it to the main line. Alright guys, welcome back. So I got the anchor point for the, the weight. I'm just hanging it up on the pegboard. So I have the an easier, I like to pull against tension before I start rigging these branch lines. So let's see if you can follow my finger right here is where there's a double figure eight knot. And that's the reason for that is when you cinch down your branch line, it won't allow it to go back or forward. So the hook can't get tangled up in your in your weight, and it can't get entangled up with your your forward hook. So I got the branch lines made up. They're about six inches long. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go. I'm not even gonna start on that double figure eight. I'm just gonna start by putting going around with a 20 pound test leader, around the 30 pound test leader, put the hook through the loop with a float, and just start pulling it tight. Then I'm gonna slide up to those figure eight knots and start pulling it even tighter. So I got a little tag line on the 20 pound. And once you get it always sense down, just pull it down. That way, when you can, let me see. You can pull this way and it can't go any further. And pull this way and it can't go any further. <clears throat> now, if there's a pompano out there, or something bigger than a pumping on like a cobia and he breaks 20 pound tests hey you know what i'm just better off not knowing what it was uh but when i go to the beach if i am catching pompano left and right that's great if i'm catching hardtails or ladyfish every every cast then i'm gonna be fishing for somewhere else for something different so i got one more branch line I like to use 20 pound branch line and 30 pound main line so that it's kind of like a sabiki rig. All these years I've been using sabiki rigs and you always lose the branch line first, not the main line. So I kind of learned from that. So you use heavier main line to handle the, the casting of the, the weight and uh, the branch lines are just for the finesse for the fish. So you got a white float here and a high vis float here. For the last three or four years, I've only caught fish really for the most part on white and green or high vis. And I got a green one here. And I don't even remember where I got these floats from. I got them from some guy on Facebook. And uh, I've got, I ordered a hundred of them. So I've, I'm good for a while. And uh, there you have it. I got a brand new rig. I'm about to go tie it on a rod. Then I'm going to be pumping on fishing, I think, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this next week. And that'd be uh, the 3rd of May. I fished uh, a few days ago and caught some uh, six pompano. It was kind of slow, but I'm thinking that with the moon phase, that uh, 
it's looking pretty pretty good for those days. I'm gonna go Wednesday. It's kind of on the on the on the better part of the moon, and then Thursday and Friday and even Saturday morning is supposed to be hot, hot, hot. And uh, if I go and the pompano aren't biting, then I'll go find a different kind of fish to catch. Y'all take it easy. Thanks for watching.